really what to fucking expect from this, but here we go. In the words of Mario. Oh. Say the madman with the two. Kids should play Clash Royale by mandate. Yeah, sure. Why not? Risa Greg with the two. What about crying during margin calls? Nah. The three scenarios, I think, cover everything. Body Pilot with the five. I love both Last of Us games, but Bloodborne needs a remake way more. Seems Sony's porting every game to PC except the one that needs it most. Yep, 100% agree. But I think it's because FromSoft doesn't want to work on it anymore. I think, honestly, that's the case. Growing YouTube streamer I Show Speed recently got a channel strike and a temporary ban from streaming after he violated YouTube's policies on sexual content content and nudity. This TOS violating stream initially slipped under YouTube's radar because I Show Speed deleted his YouTube stream as soon as the TOS violating moment occurred, but this ended up gaining YouTube's attention again when they replied to a tweet revealing the TOS violating clip from none other than Jake Lucky, the same guy who a few- Dude, what a fucking pussy months back, called out I Show Speed for misogynistic comments in Valorant voice chat, which then got him banned from all of Riot Games. If you want to learn more about that, I already have videos about it on my channel, but for now, let's take a look at the Jake Lucky tweet that got him temporarily banned from YouTube streaming. Jake shows the clip with the caption, I Show Speed getting a blowjob in Minecraft in front of 90,000 viewers. Come on, man, what are you doing? He's just trying to get that forsaken top. Why the fuck are you hating? Hey, chat. But y'all well, y'all can't see this because you guys are- Damn, bro, she thick as fuck. Last arc with the 10. So I've been reintroduced to a game from my childhood. Project Sylphid, a space sim from Square Enix made by the Final Fantasy team. I played it so much. So many good memories. Awesome, man. Glad you are enjoying it. I have never heard of that one. So I'm guessing it's turn-based, right? Kind of like Final Fantasy? No clue. But awesome, bro. You guys are too young, and I don't want to show this to young children. So I'm about to hide my screen. Come on, Jenny, baby. Dude, this shit is fucking harmless. I don't know, man. It's just like, motherfuckers are mad that this dude is winning. Plain and simple. Hinato the two, what about crying during Abby's sex scene? Maybe because you're not in it. You know, fair enough. Jaquavius Kennedy with the two, how do you feel? Nancy Pelosi, Taiwan issue? Um... Let's go, Brandon. I agree. Yeah. Body pilot with the five. Have you watched? Bring Halo Bags, Halo Co op video. If not, can we watch it on stream? Eh, I don't really. I mean, I really don't care, in all honesty. It's kind of an old topic at this point, and plus it's Halo Infinite, which I don't really think anybody gives a fuck about at this point, if I'm just keeping it a buck fitty. So, probably not. Cool dude responds to the tweet by saying, If you were actually entertained by this guy, you were certified 14 years old forever. Jesus responds, So wait. <laughs> okay, cool dude. What you were saying is, We found the fountain of youth? Lord Real replies, That's awesome. Let's continue watching I Show Speed. Then we'll never get old, lol. Willie Mac Show responds by saying, Why are you such a buzzkill? Seriously, don't know how you have any friends. Can you laugh at anything? Cavo says, Come on, man, what are you doing? But uses this clip for clicks, likes, and spread it around even more. If you have such a big problem with it, then why signal boost the clip even more? Sam responds by saying, You both have the same job. You should have really thought that tweet through. Cavo 
Elvis responds, not really. I make videos and content and actually give my opinions on topics. Jake just posts clips he doesn't like for shock value and engagements without any actual substance. Lawrence Chanson responds to Jake Lucky by saying, of course you always come after the black creators negatively. If this was XQC, you'd be spamming W. Math go- Uh, you know, I don't like it when people play the race card, but Jake Lucky is the type of motherfucker that would play the race card. So I say throw it right back in his face. Alamania Crayon with the two. Speed is just trying to make the chat go crazy. Oh, definitely. The dude is an entertainer at his fucking heart. Like, he is great at what he does. And motherfuckers are mad jealous that he's winning. Frank on TV with the two. How Hollywood can't compete with the internet, basically. I don't know, man. I think it's great. I show speed seems like a genuinely funny and entertaining dude. And all these fucking loser, fucking Karen-ass content creators are pissed that they'll never have even a fucking fraction of his success. Goes fast responds, XQC would never do this though. To which Shay responds, XQC got banned for playing a porn game on stream before. Archie's Papa responds to Jake by saying, Holy shit, that sucks, man. I love Pi31 says, You were going at him because he has an absurd amount of viewers, but this is normal in GTA RP. The irony is unreal. Cole Man responds, Ah, yes. The M rated game with prostitution slash strippers, and the Minecraft with a viewer average of 8. Brandon Fur responds, Yes, the M rated game filled with kids. Dude, what type of fucking fanook ass a motherfucker cares about the rating on a video game? Dude, I like this new word. Thank you, Lucas, for bringing my attention to it. But yeah, I don't know, man. You have to be a mega bitch to be like, that's an M rated. Shut the fuck up, dude. Nobody gives a fuck about video game ratings. Unless you're literally the most pathetic human being on planet Earth. Kids slash teens playing it. Anthony responds to Jake by saying, This is disgusting. Where do I find this so I know how to avoid it? Baze Ronaldo says, Where do you download this mod? Baze. <laughs> Fucking based. Sloan. Dude, the phase motherfuckers seem pretty legit. That's a W. Santana says, Slow News Day? To which Hermit92 responds, Honest question. Why do streamers hate him so much? Like, I get. They're jealous. Yet he over a lot, but sometimes he actually reports stuff that's interesting, funny, weird. I get streams don't want their shit on blast, but isn't he just doing his job? Prophase Ninja responds by saying, he reports negative things to black streamer. XL Foxy GG responds to Jake by saying, guy can't breathe without making a report about him. Scene TV responds to Jake by saying, people do this in GTA RP all the time, but you only have a problem when speed does it? Back 6 responds by saying, Seem, what the fuck are you saying, bro? You can't compare GTA to Minecraft. The last yes, you can. They have the same fucking target age range. There are probably as many 8-year-olds playing GTA as there are Minecraft. Cope. Fing my ass off. Old F4 responds by saying, You think that only kids play Minecraft? To which Back6 responds, Obviously not. The games have totally different natures. Minecraft is E for everyone, and GTA is rated R. No sh. Dude, I fucking hate when people bring up game ratings. Like, get the fuck out of the 90s, you fucking loser. Holy shit. Shit, that GTA is gonna have sex in it. Are you dumb? Cass BD responds by saying, What's stopping a 10 year old from playing that? Boneless. Nothing. Saying the madman with the two, you can't see. Wait, you can see the hate in their eyes? Oh, 100%. They're all fucking jealous. Tide Pod responds to Jake by saying, Jake Lucky, if a hall monitor didn't exist. PWR Timmy says, Come on, man, what are you doing? Repost said clip to 270k Twitter followers. Paryeet responds to Jake by saying, You can't cancel him, buddy. Move on to someone else. EXSZN says, I'd be walling on GTARP, Jake. Lurkin Panda quote tweets Jake and says, MF's defending this dude showing porn to kids by saying it happens all the time in GTARP. Oh, yeah, this was fucking porn. Holy fuck, man. Idiots. Fucking idiots. Kai Birth says, How do his parents wake up every day knowing this is what they are responsible for creating? Yeah. Your parents are probably wondering the same shit. From Hunter with the five, lol. I don't know why this guy has to read aloud the post when we could. But I thought the last speed situation was legit his L. 
This is nothing? What was the last situation that was his L? I'm not up to date. But the reason why he's reading it is because, you know, people want text-to-speech. Justin Wang says, Looks like he's getting a blowjob in Minecraft in front of 90k viewers. Mood w. Mudahar says, Laughing my ass off, I did not expect to see Minecraft cock. Luna says, Jake Lucky posting the same blowjob Minecraft clip and getting 20 times more views than Speed did. Man, what are you doing? Eckhart Slatter says, Laughing my ass off, this is hilarious. Generation Z is the funniest generation by far. Technical says, Jake Lucky attacking a black creator for getting head. Come on, man, what are you doing? Lord Vega says, Grandma Jake out here winning Hall Monitor of the Century. Relax, guy. So a couple hours after the fireworks who cares how is that an l for him he got a fuck ton of viewers from that shit nothing actually happened and everybody had a good laugh how was that an l if anything that was a w it got him way more attention after Jake posted his tweet, Team YouTube responded by saying, Mind sharing the video URL with us over DM? You can also report the content using the steps here. Sharing the link to their report page. Shortly after this, I show Speed then received his strike and temporary streaming ban on his YouTube channel. He shares this with his audience on Twitter and captions it by saying, Really? I couldn't even hit 10 million. Nothing happens in this stream. Can't believe this actually happened. Can you guys please review this stream? At Team YouTube, at YouTube. Emilio responds by saying, Fed Lucky back at it again. Your fellow Arab quote tweets Speed and says, This is what happens when we give white racists like Jake Lucky a platform to ruin people of color's achievements. I show Speed also updates his fans on his Instagram, saying, I'm banned guys, goodbye. Jake Lucky shows this on his Twitter and captions it by saying, I show Speed claims he has been banned and saying goodbye from YouTube. He's just given a community strike and the content was taken down. That is all. He is not going anywhere and will break 10 million subscribers today. Snake responds to Jake by saying, why do you constantly go after him, bro? Just a question. Jake responds, I would mention any streamer on Twitch or YouTube who decided to get a blowjob in a Minecraft mod in front of 100,000 people. Who fucking ca- Dude, I don't know, man. Nobody's watching I show speed for fucking family-friendly content, you dumb Neanderthal. That's like saying, Oh my god, there's nudity on Pornhub! Yeah, dude, there's gonna be fucking edgy humor in I show speed stream. Crazy concept, right? I'm pretty sure the fucking Minecraft cock is not very accurate, but, you know, I, it's just, it's so fucking stupid. This guy's really up in his feelings because some dude got some fucking forsaken top in Minecraft, and now he's... Him. Like seriously, Jake responds, I talk about streamer news. You are a streamer. You got a blowjob in a Minecraft mod. I shared the clip. Speed responds by saying, yeah, and you shared it with no context. I immediately deleted the stream as soon as it showed TOS. Just admit you want views and it's okay. I will never show porn on stream knowing my position, but your job is to make someone look bad, so congrats. Jake responds by saying, what do you mean without context? You literally knew you were giving a blowjob live on stream from a Minecraft character for nearly a minute. Give me the full context then. Speed responds, you're just not getting the point, are you? To which Jake responds, what's the context? And Speed replies, what do you mean the context? I just told you, obviously I didn't know TOS was going to pop up, so I deleted the stream. It's like getting a dance in GTA, etc. Just hold this ratio, mate. I'm tired of going back and forth. <laughs> oh my god, man. Dude, Jake Lucky is like the literal epitome of the guy who is only semi-famous because of other more famous people he talks about. And no one actually gives a fuck about him. So he always has to try and start drama with people that are more popular with him. Or than him. Because he's a fucking pussy. So let's see... Not now with the five is pan wait, my parents bullied me when I got low grades. I learned and taught me to get better. Yep.
bullying is sadly going in the way of the fucking dinosaurs. And Prime Hunter with the five. Not the fireworks I meant when he yelled at his team in Valorant guy was going wild for no reason. But this is like... Well, dude, he was talking shit in a video. Who... I don't know. That's not an L. Talking shit in a fucking video game lobby is fun. Like, that's part of what online gaming is supposed to be about. Being toxic as fuck and talking shit. And that's all he was doing. And they were talking shit right back to him. So, that whole situation was bullshit, in my opinion. If anything, shit talk in video games should be encouraged, not punished. But that is my stance on that matter. Greed God X comments on the situation by saying, Sorry, but I show speed is the best thing to happen to streaming in 2022. He is one of the few that makes me laugh left. W speed. Yo, this Jake Lucky guy is giving me real Randall vibes. No cap, he kinda looks like this. Keemstar then gives his opinion in a Twitter video titled, I show speed versus Jake Lucky. Let me get you this straight, just so we're on the same page. Speed, a gaming entertainer, is fucking around with like a Minecraft sex mod, right? Making jokes about getting a blowjob or whatever. He's an entertainer. He's doing entertaining things, all right? He's cracking jokes. He's entertaining people in front of like 60,000 people, right? Jake Lucky has a problem with it and says, why is Speed pretending to get a blowjob in front of all these people? But then clips it and tweets it out in front of all of his audience. So it ain't about people viewing this, because if it was, then why is Jake Lucky sharing the fucking clip? What is the point of it? The point is to tattletale. The point is to narc. The point is to get speed in trouble. Team YouTube responded, hey, we're gonna review this and da 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 Like, I don't know how anybody in this community can support Jake Lucky. I don't know how you can support Jake Lucky. Why hasn't Jake Lucky called out all the sexual stuff on Twitch? If he's so worried about speed, what about all the sexual stuff in gaming that happens on Twitch? Nah, dude, he can't do that. It would affect his uh, standing with his favorite e-girls. You know, that's real content right there. Amaranth writing your name across your titties. Twitch on a fucking daily basis. What about the, uh, the gaming entertainers with the OnlyFans or the gaming entertainers in the hot tubs? He, does Jake Lucky have a problem with that? Why is it always speed? He's always targeting speed. Somebody please explain this to me. And he does it in a very non-logical way that doesn't make sense. I can't believe you're sharing this in front of all these people. But he shares the same clip. He shares the same clip with his <laughs> yeah. followers. Something is not adding up. It's not adding up. He then Racism. follows up his video by saying, racially motivated, to which Jake Lucky responds to him with a screenshot of Keemstar saying the N-word to Alex back in 2009. Based. Dude, Keemstar was in fact on blog TV with his fucking hands up and he was not starting his fucking self. It was in fact that stupid bitch, Alex. So, Zong Xena with the two. Keem is based sometimes. Yeah, I think Keem has good takes for the majority of situations, in all honesty. Jesus Wagon with the two. Nothing I hate more than a rat and a snake. Yup. This dude is... I don't know. Jake Lucky is just an absolute fucking pussy. Now, Rosario Soul with the two. Did you watch the PewDiePie drama? No. I have no idea what the fuck that is. Team then continues tweeting about the situation when he makes this poll with the caption, Is Jake Lucky's several attacks on iShow Speed over the last year racially motivated? The final results with 30k votes were... A <laughs> Jake Lucky hates blacks. <laughs> Dude, that's fucking weak. <laughs> that shit's fucking weak. Approximately 30% saying no, and 70% saying yes, Jake Lucky hates blacks. Doc Hatchy <laughs> quote tweets Keemstar and says, How does this dumbass still have his account? Absolute man-child. Jake Lucky responds by saying, I got a grown man who has full out yelled the n-word, somehow leading the charge that I am a racist. And Twitter has no policy in place to stop it. Oh no, he said a word, dude, so he must be fucking racist, right? Shut the fuck up, Jake. Go back to fucking State Farm, you fucking pussy. Because I don't he's know, just man. sharing his I level gaming with the two. Did you hear about Chris Chan going to trial? Uh yeah, somebody mentioned that earlier. When did the lock him up?
opinion. Fun times. Keemstar then continues yet again when he tweets out who Jake Lucky thinks he is versus who Jake Lucky really is. Hashtag free speed. With the left image showing Jake Lucky as an FBI agent and the right image showing him as a hall monitor. Jake Lucky's partner Hunter shows Keemstar's latest tweets about Jake Lucky and captions them by saying, hate mongering and slander to a massive audience like this is filthy. Genuinely concerned how this isn't worth at Twitter at Twitter. His partner? Uh oh. For gaming taking action. Keemstar responds to him by saying, Slander? Those are legal terms. Let's go to court and see if you win. Hunter responds by saying, No one wants to join your dick measuring money contest in court. We are 20 somethings trying to make it. You are both publicly and privately trying to promote Jake as a racist, to people to try and tarnish his reputation in the community, to try and hold on to relevancy. Keemstar then responds, My lawyers will be contacting you. Jake Lucky's partner also goes after Kavos when he tweets out, The duality of man, showing the tweet we read earlier where Kavos asks Jake why he's signal boosting such a problematic clip, as well as a tweet Kavos made a couple weeks ago where he criticized iShow Speed for lighting fireworks in his own bedroom. Kavos responds to Hunter by saying, yeah, I have a valid opinion and actually said my problem with the clip, that he could have started a house fire. Jake Lucky just posts the clip with some vague opinion, but he knows it will get clicks. Also, starting a fire versus a stupid Minecraft blowjob are completely different. Hunter continues to defend his partner on Twitter when he tweets. I love what gaming with the two. We need to bring the bullying to anime conventions or something else that starts with bull, but you know, I'm not going there. Tweets out, only on the internet can a kid stream himself having sex on Minecraft to a bunch of other kids, and Jake gets blamed for the dude getting in trouble. Bunch of morons. If you were trying to argue that the 17 year old child I show speed should be allowed to stream- The 17 year old child? Dude, I fucking hate people that do this shit. Oh my god, he's a child. He was 17. When you were 17, you're not a fucking child. I am so sick of this shit, bro. I am so sick of these people acting like a 17-year-old is a fucking child. They're not a child. They literally could be two days from being considered legally an adult. You don't magically become a fucking adult or mature when you turn eight. Like, what the... I fucking hate... This is how you know a motherfucker is dumb. Or it's like the motherfuckers who go like, he was a 21-year-old kid. It's like... Kid? No. That's not a kid. Like, you're literally, I don't, f this whole fucking thing is dumb. They're really trying to, now they're trying to downplay it like he's a, a fucking minor. So, well, dude, if he he's a kid, he wouldn't know any better, right? So you should let him off, right? If we're going to say that he's a literal child, shouldn't we give him the benefit of the doubt? Because, you know, he is a child. So his uh, decision making might not be the best. And also, why are you all reposting a clip of a child? Having sex in Minecraft. Isn't that pedophilia? Uh-oh. In this and there's nothing wrong with it, I can only assume you were a sexual predator. If this is the content you support, you are disgusting. Now this tweet is extremely nuclear, like implying people are pedophiles because they are criticizing Jake for signal boosting a- Yo, then why is Jake posting the fucking pedophilic content? You know, if Jake, if this is the equivalent of pedophilia, why is Jake posting the clip of, you know, pedophilic material? Uh-oh. Clip that a streamer already deleted of him accidentally showing Minecraft cock on stream. So I responded to him by saying, Jake Lucky's husband says if you disagree with Jake Lucky's coverage of I Show Speed, then you are a pedo. Which Hunter then responds by saying, Why the fuck didn't you tell me we got married, Jake Lucky? This feels like some weird middle school shit. When if you disagree with them, they tell everyone you're gay. Which even though that wasn't my intention at all, the lack of self awareness is just insane. Uh oh. Looks like they're trying to hide something. Wouldn't be surprising.
mean, considering he just said that anyone who disagrees with Jake is a pedophile. So I respond to him by saying, your bio says that guy with Jake Lucky, and your banner is you guys together. With how much emphasis you put on you being partners with Jake in your profile, I assumed you guys were dating since a lot of couples on Twitter do that. Kind of weird that you assumed it was an insult? Calling you Jake Lucky's husband was to highlight your bias towards him. Not to say it's bad that you were gay? Kind of cowardly that you were trying to twist my tweet into somehow being homophobic instead of actually addressing the criticism. Oh well. Dude, they're 100% fucking. Barista Craig with the two. Think of the children. Karen at college. Yeah, this shit's fucking sad. Sam the Madman with the two. Nine-year-olds look up boobs on Google. Yeah. It's... <laughs> Oh man, I just, I don't understand being this big of a fucking massive throbbing pussy on the internet, but Jake Lucky somehow manages. Well, Hunter then responds to me by saying, Never heard of business partners, duos, co-hosts? Spend more than five minutes looking at our profiles? If so, you'd obviously know Jake is dating someone. I've been married to my wife for years, and Jake and I worked together as partners for two years now. Weak excuse. To which I respond, I spent five minutes looking at your profile, and it was all tweets defending Jake. That in combination with the bio made me think you guys were dating. When you say you were with someone in your bio with no extra context, it usually implies that you were in a relationship with them. Which is legitimately what I thought. I didn't think they were actually married yet, but I thought they were together. Because believe it or not, I do usually spend over five minutes looking at someone's profile before I cover them in depth on my channel. And the last like 24 hours of tweets were him talking about Jake. Jake again is heavily prominent in his bio. And then when you go over to Jake's profile, he sends images of him in a dress to people. This tells you everything you need to fucking know right here. And just dresses and presents himself in a way that seems gay. That in com <laughs> I agree. Combination with Hunter's banner picture and bio, and the fact that Jake's handle is literally Jake Sucky just made me think they were gay. <laughs> <laughs> Bruh. And there's not really anything on their profiles that indicate that they're straight or in a relationship with a woman. So yeah, I made an honest mistake, but calling me homophobic for that, I think is just really fucked up. Like, obviously I was criticizing you for your ludicrous take on calling people who defend I show speed predators and not joking that you're gay, but I guess just continue to twist it in any way that makes you look better, bro. But anyways, moving on, Keemstar continues to argue with Hunter a little bit more on Twitter when he says, Jake Lucky's co-worker Hunter tags Twitter gaming trying to deplatform me for reporting, giving my opinion and cracking jokes on the hall monitor known as Jake Lucky. He also accuses me of slander, a legal term that I'm challenging him to defend in court. Hashtag drama alert, hashtag free speed. Hunter responds by saying, court isn't some silly challenge to joke about. You are repeatedly messing with someone's reputation to try and force your audience to believe he's a racist with no founding. Yes, you deserve to be deplatformed. Keemstar shows this tweet from Hunter along with some other previous ones. At the time of this tweet, 22 2000 voted that they think Jake Lucky attacks on iShow Speed were racially motivated. Jake's co-worker Hunter says those 22k people are slandering Jake Lucky. Take us to court then! Twitter gaming supports the gaming community. All of us, not just you. Keemstar then shows Hunter's ridiculous tweet calling people sexual predators and captions it by saying, another unhinged tweet from this person. Defend it in court! Moving away from Hunter and back to Jake, he tweets out a meme of iShow Speed having him on a leash and says, oh come on. Speed responds by saying, Remember, you were nothing until you made that tweet about me. After continuing to get all of this ridicule, Jake then tweets out, I'm not sorry for sharing the speed clip. I would have done it for any streamer and I have in the past. I'm sorry I didn't censor it to my audience. I'm sorry that I'm now somehow racist and my family is getting threats. Please keep the hate directed at me and me alone. Chris Raygun responds to him by saying, You were not racist, you were just this guy, showing a picture of Randall. And Willie Maxwell responds to him by saying, You were a professional hall monitor. And that is about it for the Twitter discourse surrounding Jake Lucky's call out and I show Speed's temporary streaming ban. I would love to know what your guys' thoughts on all of this are in the comment section below. And if you want to see more videos like these, don't forget to subscribe with notifications on. But with all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see Jake banning for the home team. It would not surprise me, but hey man. You never know. Let's see, Frank on TV with the five, they really are concerned about the children and they wouldn't let their children on the internet. Yeah, exactly. It's not anyone's fucking responsibility of what your kids watches except you. Plain and simple, but you know.
Everybody wants everyone else to be a parent for them, basically. Even Jake Lucky. I don't know, man. Total Randall play? I don't even know what the fuck that dude's from. So, DJ Aftershock with the two dry snitching, also base speed roast at the end. Yeah. I don't know, man. Jake Lucky's just a massive fucking meat rider. Maybe unironically, too, you know? Maybe. I guess we'll never know. Unless those pictures have anything to tell us. Twitter dumpster fire. All I got from that, those two guys are totally gay for, yeah, bro, for real, it did seem like it, especially with those pictures added on, that was kind of the icing on the cake in that particular scenario. I would say that definitely was the icing on the cake in that particular scenario. So I guess let's watch this shit about the PS5 because I really don't know much about it. I'm guessing... I think Review Tech did a video on it, right? I would assume. Great news! The PS5 is getting some major upgrades. The PlayStation 5 may become more expensive. Uh-oh. George Bush has fantastic buns. Fantastic buns. Fantastic buns. Fantastic buns. Fantastic buns. Skip it a button, that up. Hey everybody, your favorite man with an ass is now on Cameo. You could get your own personalized video message sent directly from me. Is Jake a top or a bot? Oh, I definitely think bottom, personally. To you. Link to my Cameo below the He probably likes laying on the stomach. Description. I look forward to seeing you there. So usually as time goes on and products age, uh, they get cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> they don't become more expensive usually. Um, but we're seeing due to semiconductor shortages and supply shortages that it's the exact opposite case. Now, I'm not talking about scalpers. That That's a whole other can of worms. I'm talking about manufacturers and corporations increasing the MSRP of their products. For example, the Quest 2 is getting a price increase, not a decrease, a price increase. I crap you not. I hate that I have to censor myself for YouTube sometimes. So, for example, the Meta Quest 2. I hate that name. It's just called Oculus Quest. It sounds so much better. But the Meta Quest 2 is uh, in August sometime. So if you want to get one, get one now. It's cheaper. Uh, is increasing by 100 bucks for each model. The 128 gigabyte Meta Quest 2 is going from 299 to 399 and the 256 gigabyte MetaQuest 2 is going from 399 to 499. That is an astronomical price increase, especially when you consider the MetaQuest 2 first came on the market in October of 2020. I fucking hate the name Meta. It just sounds so gay. Like I don't know. Like why would you change it from Oculus to Meta Quest? That just sounds so fucking retarded. I don't know. Facebook is a massive L, but that's nothing new. It's almost two years old. Now they're increasing the prices. But it gets better because the PlayStation 5 getting a price increase is not off the table. This video wasn't clickbait. This past Friday, it had an earnings call, and this is what they had to say about a possible price increase of the PlayStation 5. This comes from VideoGamesChronicle.com. During its first quarter earnings call on Friday, Sony was asked whether it was considering increasing the PS5 price point in the face of similar market pressures. This is what Sony's chief financial officer, Hiroki Totoki, had to say about a possible price increase of the PS5. Bro, that's kind of a baller name. Hiroki Totoki? The first and last name rhyme. Hell yeah. Five. 
about a potential price increase for the console at this point in time there is nothing specific i can share with you about prices which means that it is not off the table that is corporate speak for saying that it's not off the table that there may be a price increase because if there wasn't going to be one sony would just say no there why would you they would want to ease the fears of the consumer it's that simple if if there wasn't going to be a price increase they would say no there's going to be we're holding to the price firm you know we could handle it it doesn't matter about the semiconductor shortages no they're like yeah well we have nothing to say right now but we may in the future this is like an absolute disaster scenario for i'd love to see what's going to happen with the oculus quest sales numbers after the price increase you're increasing the price of a two-year-old product a hundred bucks two years down the line how is that going to sit with people that's like buying a flagship smartphone that is now two years old and samsung decided to increase the price by a hundred bucks or 200 bucks you would that's insane it's dated tech and you want me to spend more money on something that's almost two years old but it's branded meta you know mark zuckerberg fucking touched it himself i don't fucking know you can't tell me there's not another meta quest around the corner it's just mind-boggling and then you people could barely find a playstation 5 they can't find them anywhere and then you're going to turn around and say hey not only can you not find this console we may increase the price of it but yeah inflation is across all industries not just food gas whatever like inflation touches all products and electrical components are definitely part of that now, Sony didn't flat out come out and say it, like I said, but they also didn't say they aren't going to, which if you read between the lines, that means they're thinking about it. So if you're thinking about getting a PlayStation 5 or an, a Meta Quest, excuse me, now is the time to do it because a few months down the line, at least definitely for the Meta Quest, it's definitely increasing the price in August, you're gonna be spending more money. So not only can you not find Sony's console, it may cost you more, and it's not because of scalpers. It may be because of Sony themselves. The PlayStation's been sitting, though, recently. If you guys have, I guess, followed any, like, bot accounts, like, on PlayStation Direct, they don't sell out anymore immediately. They sit for, like, an hour or two, and you can still buy them with zero wait time. So I think the PlayStation hype is basically dead. You can't really resell them anymore because... Like, after fees and everything, you're not really making any money. In fact, sometimes you're even losing money. So, I think the whole scalping craze is done with the consoles. And, you know, the PlayStation 5 is so easy to get at this point if you want to get one. So, I think we're kind of out of the woods on that whole situation. But inflation is a very fucking real thing. Selves, we are living in interesting times. Buckle up. This is Rich at Review Tech USA signing out. Have a good one. Buckle up, buckaroo. Today I want to ask and answer a very important question, which is, is The Last of Us Part 1 Remake already screwed? Because... <laughs> no, it'll probably still sell well. It does sort of feel like the entire conversation around this game is so dang negative from hate videos to weird screenshots to people discussing the fact that the complete lack of gameplay makes it overpriced. And now even the developers seem to be trying to defend it piece by piece and it feels ridiculous. What's up gamers? Yeah, well... You know, Naughty Dog's not exactly known for making sense. Dreamcast guy here. So what I want to try and do today is sort of compare it to some other PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 exclusives and sort of dig into this whole mess because it does feel like what's going on with The Last of Us Part 1 Remake, it's beginning to remind me a lot of the leaks that kind of screwed over The Last of Us Part 2. So hi, hope you're having a great day. If you I would really be interested to know what the sales numbers of The Last of Us Part 2 are. Like, I'm actually kind of curious, because I don't think it sold very well. Because typically Sony will come out and brag, like, we sold 10 million copies or whatever. I don't think it sold very well, personally, but maybe I'm wrong. No clue.
If you enjoyed this video, give it a big old like and subscribe if you haven't already. So sort of what kicked this off is this strange tweet that just popped up. A lot of y'all actually have sent this to me. So this dude is the lead environmental artist over at Naughty Dog. This dude actually makes, of course, a bunch of fancy trees and moss and all the stuff that makes the world feel more lived in. Well, he's basically saying he's very sad that the gameplay, giant air quotes, gameplay for The Last of Us Part 1 remake leaked because it puts the game into a different light. He basically says, after all these years- You mean the realistic light and not the fucking heavy PR bullshit light? Oh no, how terrible. So working in the industry, I never get used to it, but I'm proud we're finally able to share that gameplay for ourselves in HD. And of course followed is that gameplay showcase that pretty much nobody was impressed with. Now I've talked in general about how honestly, the Last of Us Part 1 gameplay, as it originally existed back in 2013, is still fantastic. I still think the game itself, while being very, very tiny, it was certainly fun. But the biggest thing we loved about The Last of Us Part 1 was the incredible story, the emotional voice acting, so much... Th so, as long as you know with the two, Bidenomics is a real killer? Yeah. You know what they say, man. Let's go, Brandon, I agree. Yeah. I love gaming with the two. You said the answer right there. Hell yeah, dude. Let's fucking go. The animation and stuff, it conveyed a severe bright darkness. It sold 10 million? Yeah, that's not great. Because what did Last of Us 1 sell? Like 17, 18 million? So a sequel that high profile should easily surpass the original. But guess not to humanity and this remake it doesn't really feel like that much but somebody here actually replied and said you know we were all hyped when it was announced because we assumed it would have improved gameplay much like the last of us part two and instead it's just an amazing visual upgrade and nothing else that price needs to be dialed down now jonathan actually replied and said people complain about gameplay by watching a video but nobody actually had their hands on the controller which this feels weird we've played this game having played the game on both playstation 3 and playstation 5 there is no comparison and if you could go prone it would simply break the gameplay and the combat because it wasn't built in originally now jonathan this feels a little bit like a straw man we're not saying that we want the existing game to have joel go prone we're saying we thought that there was going to be new gameplay that would acclimate to joel being able to go prone but you know what what kind of makes me think about this is the fact that these leaks are starting to remind me a lot of The Last of Us Part 2 because those leaks definitely hurt the game. So Last of Us Part 1 originally sold 17. So Jet Black Throat with the two. Griffy Coon. Ooh, woo, can you call me and Mike Hunt? Chan cute. Jet Black Threat and Mike Hunt. You guys are cute million copies which is absolutely bonkers whereas last of us part two last of us part two has sold 10 million copies now this is obviously in a shorter time frame but it does feel like the last of us part two sales have sort of gone off a cliff it seems like yeah and that game dropped to like 30 bucks a month after launch too like they were deep discounting that shit they've stifled quite a bit which is strange because this is clearly meant to be a big budget giant release, a big title banner for Sony themselves. And I do personally, I attribute this heavily to the leaks that surrounded The Last of Us Part Two. Months before that game actually came out, just a singular cutscene was posted on the internet that unfortunately showed the most beloved character having his brains literally bashed out. Now, most of us, it does feel like that created an initial taint, a darkness before we even played the game itself. I love The Last of Us Part 1 a lot. I think the idea of the original story was just so focused. It was so gritty. It felt like the worst, best story ever. It felt like this dad doing the impossible for what felt like the last good deed, you know, of The Last of Us. Now, the fact that he had to die at the very beginning of The Last of Us Part 2, that kind of tainted our hype. And to this day, I still believe 
that negative conversation about all the rumors, all the stuff, all the no context spoilers that ended up on the internet hurts the sales. Oh, there was plenty of context to those spoilers and it was spot on with what everybody was expecting. Of The Last of Us Part 2. Now those of us who ended up playing how much money did I make from Last of Us 2? Oh, a fuck ton. Probably like 20 grand, I would say. Close. That whole era was very profitable. In The Last of Us Part 2 would realize that while the story itself was a little bit like a wet fart, it was still a good game. The gameplay was incredibly top-notch. The crafting systems, the stealth systems, the incredibly creepy monsters, including like the Rat King, these are top-notch. But in my eyes, it still definitely hurts the sales of the game overall. Like, Last of Us Part Two, before it came out, was one of the most hyped games perhaps ever for any PlayStation console. The freaking hype was palpable, and yet other games like Sucker Punch is bragging about the fact that Ghost of Tsushima launched and has already sold 10 million copies. Now, the reason I make this comparison is that A, I absolutely love Ghost of Tsushima. I platinumed it on PS4 and PS5. This game is truly great, but it is the- It's a brand new IP as well, so that's pretty impressive. Doom Boom with the two, you gotta love his humor playing a golf game. That's right. The Dreamcast guy adding those nice little extra touches. The first entry in a new series. Typically, the first game of a new IP does not sell the best. Like Mass Effect 2 sells better than Mass Effect 1. Witcher 3 outsells 1 and 2 combined. I mean, I sort of just feel like the fact that this managed to sell 10 million copies as the first game shows how great Ghost of Tsushima is. But additionally, it does kind of make me think that there is some sort of problem with The Last of Us Part 2. And that came down in a large part because we knew everything bad before we knew anything good. And as it stands, I feel like the conversation around The Last of Us Part 1 remake now is about these graphics. People can't be happy that the game is coming back. They haven't announced that there's going to be any cool new trophies or hidden challenges or if it's going to connect to the new Last of Us factions, which personally I believe one of the few actually new, and I have to put everything in quotes because this stuff is so ridiculously tiny, one of the new features is that there's going to be costumes inside The Last of Us part one <laughs> hell yeah man i can play dress up in my fucking post-apocalyptic survival simulator let's go on remake so you can dress up ellie in a shirt from uncharted which whoop de do but it does make me think if that's in the game it's probably going to connect to the last of us faction that new multiplayer thing that naughty dog is working on for some point it's like a standalone multiplayer expansion for the last of us and as great as that's going to be i do feel like this is almost just feeding into that a marketing point for a game that's not even fully shown yet that's kind of my disappointment. Not only is The Last of Us Part 1 Remake more expensive, it's $70. The original game was $60. The original game went on sale constantly. The original game came with multiplayer. This has none, and now we know it 100%. And even, I can't help but just think about this, The Last of Us Part 2 is a longer game with amazing graphics and better gameplay for a lower price. I, I mean, really... As a gamer, as a PlayStation gamer, as a dude who buys a lot of stuff, I still kind of think this game might be screwed just because on the surface, it does seem like a bit of a cash grab. I It'll still grab them plenty of cash though. That's the thing. The casual market's going to eat this shit up. I know that Sony keeps coming out and be like, no, 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 but let's be clear, this isn't a cash grab, but let's compare it to any other game, like even Marvel Spider-Man. Now, we've had two Marvel Spider-Man games. Recently, they announced Spider-Man is coming to PC, and when they announced that, they said that the Spider-Man games, the new ones they've been coming out with, have already sold 33 million copies 33 million copies in just a couple years comparing that again to the fact that this is sold three times more than the last of us even compared to something like god of war god of war is now sold 20 million copies this is a little bit of an old article god of war 2018 originally released on the playstation 4 and later was ported to pc and as bonkers as it is even this game has sold double the amount 
of Last of Us Part 2. It really makes me think that there is this problem that happens with all these leaks. The fact that Naughty Dog manages to have their stuff slip on the internet before they can properly get ahead of it, before the PR people, all the public representatives that can come out and give us an, an official statement and a clean trailer, Naughty Dog is getting killed by its own leaks. As it stands, no, they're getting killed by their own dog shit fucking game design. Plain and simple. The Last of Us 2 was a dog shit fucking game from a pacing and story perspective, which is the entire point of a game like that. And The Last of Us Part 1 is a blatant fucking cash grab. The leaks just expose it a little bit faster, but the simple fact remains is those games are fucking trash from the very beginning. I'm not really hyped at all for The Last of Us Part 1 remake, and I feel like I should be. I Why should you be? It's literally a remaster of a fucking remaster of a game that came out 10 years ago. Who gives a shit? No one should be excited for this. I feel like I am the target demographic. I am the freaking simp. I'm the guy who loves Joel. I'm the freaking person. If they sent me a Naughty Dog shirt that just had the silhouette of Ellie walking off in the sunset, I would wear it every day until that thing fell into scraps and fell off my body. What the fuck? Dude, she's like 14. And yet at this point, I still don't know if I want to muster up 70 bucks for that game. The only reason I'm buying it, and I'm very, very clear about this, is I am buying it to make a review. I want to try and do content and discuss it. But as it stands, it's bonkers to me that this is all they've decided to do. This is something that feels $70 for something that's such a tiny visual upgrade and nothing else. It feels disgraceful. Sony has been killing it this year. We're getting God of War Ragnarok, we have Horizon Forbidden West, we got Gran Turismo 7, even third party, we got stuff like Stray, and yet now they're deciding to end it this like middle summer period with that? What the heck are you doing? What I decided to do yesterday is I randomly tweeted out how many games have you beaten this year, and I was kind of shocked that thousands of you guys have actually said you've only beaten one to three games. This makes me... Th I think I've only beaten one game... And unfortunately, that game was fucking stray. I think that in general, this has been a bit more of a quiet year for video games for a lot of people. You're probably buying some games, you're grabbing some cheap stuff, you're picking up games on a sale, but a lot of people just aren't finishing it. It makes me kind of think, if Sony had actually put in the effort to make The Last of Us Part 1 remake an actual remake, they would have had millions, hundreds of millions of dollars on their hand. Instead, they made a tiny port with a graphics mod. But tell me your thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. I'm sure the comment section is going to be very calm and very rational. But hey, these are just my thoughts. Feel free to get offended if you want. And please have a great day and keep dreaming. And it's also 10 million degrees, so uh, I am... Yo, you beat Fortnite? Congrats, man. I'm going to edit this video fully nude. Like a normal... Oh, shit. I did the same. Normal person. Maybe I should edit out this joke, but I probably won't because I'll forget. Yo, there is nothing wrong with some nude editing. I can tell you guys that firsthand. Keith with the two. Did he say GT7 and Horizon with the first straight face? <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. Because didn't Dreamcast guy say the story for Horizon was kind of bad? I don't know. Uh, it's been a while. It has been a while, man. All right, I think I'm going to have to hop off, guys. I am tired. I've been up for like 20 hours at this point, and I...